Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 17th March 2019. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to take the trades in the direction of the market. We'll study markets direction using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and technical analysis of the market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market strength, we like to align that with the industry strength. We'll study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum if i don't do that you may visit our traders forum from our website it is open to the public and we look for potential trades for the coming week that was the last slide of the presentation let's move to live system We begin our commodities analysis using oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop template and daily hop on template or entry template. Together we call this at a glance template because this template helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, after displaying the bullish headwind reversal signal at the very bottom, oil is steadily going up. The weekly candle color is remaining cyan, that is bullish. The weekly candle shape is also bullish. In the daily chart, price is in an uptrend. On Friday, USO closed with a bullish shape and bullish color candle. However, it is very close to the upper boundary level and also close to the white direction line. In the daily chart, price is overbought. Therefore, if you didn't already take a long position in oil, you may avoid taking it now. Gold ETF GLD After displaying the bearish shape candle in the weekly chart with long upper tail, price fell down. Since then, the candle color in the weekly chart, backdrop candle color, is remaining bearish magenta. This week's candle shape is indecisive. One week ago, on Friday, price went up with a bull release signal. In that market roundup, I mentioned that because price went up with a bull release signal, it was not time to take any short trade. However, it was not a time to take any long trade as well because there was no Q long trade setup. 
after that price moved in an indecisive manner first it fell down then tried to go up fell down sharply and again gapped up on friday this indecision is reflected more clearly in the weekly candle because the gold etf is moving in an indecisive fashion it may be best to stay away from taking swing trades in gold from commodities analysis we move on to market breadth analysis we are looking at nasdaq composite index and nyse composite index both using weekly charts along with three pairs of internals new high low advanced decline and up down volume because this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval you may use it for longer term investment decisions and also for swing trading but not for day trading one week ago both nasdaq and nyse dropped they displayed a bear release signal and this week both of them recovered significantly both the indices ended with bullish shape as well as bullish color candles from the swing band indicator you can see that they are not in a downtrend anymore they are not in an uptrend as well but they are not in a downtrend anymore nasdaq is stronger than nyse we can see that from the candle color turning cyan and there is no memory resistance in nasdaq whereas nyse has a memory resistance nearby because the indices dropped sharply one week ago and this week it recovered sharply in my view the market is indecisive and it may be better to stay away from the market until the direction is clearer the internals this week are bullish all the six internals went up and all of them closed above zero what about the market etfs we start with s&p 500 etf spy similar to the market indices one week ago it had a sharp drop and this week it recovered strongly in the daily chart on thursday it displayed a bear release signal and an indecisive shape candle on friday price didn't move much price is close to the upper boundary level this may not be a time to take new long trade and it is in an uptrend therefore there is no short opportunity either nasdaq etf qqq this is clearly stronger than spy the relative performance line is showing that it is tilting upward this week candle is bullish shape and also bullish in color in the daily chart price is at the upper boundary level the daily chart is overbought the weekly is also overbought this may not be the time to take new long position you may wait for it to pull back and give a low risk buying opportunity before taking any long trade dow jones industrial average etf dia clearly it is weaker than both spy and qqq this week it recovered but the candle color in the weekly chart backdrop candle color remain yellow that is neutral in the daily chart price recovered somewhat but it is far from the upper boundary level and there are multiple memory 
resistance lines in the daily chart. You may avoid taking any long trade in Daya. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is also weaker than SPY that is shown by the relative performance line tilting down. This week price recovered, however, not enough to change the weekly backdrop color to bullish. Daily is inside a triangle pattern formed by support memory and resistance memory. You may avoid taking any trade until IWM goes out of this triangle pattern. What do we see when we combine the outcome of the market breadth analysis and market ETF analysis? Market breadth shows that both NASDAQ and NYSE went up. However, NYSE is near memory resistance in the weekly chart. Market ETF analysis is showing that SPY and QQQ are quite strong. However, they are near upper boundary levels. Therefore, there may not be any low risk long opportunity. On the other hand, DIA and IWM are not so bullish. The four ETFs are sending conflicting signals. That is why in my view, it may be better to stay away from taking swing trades until the direction is clearer. That is the view from market level analysis. However, when you drill down to sector level and then into industry level, further check stocks, fundamentals and technicals, you are always able to find trades where the industry strength, fundamental strength and technical strength are aligned. We call this 360 degree trades. One month sector performance. Here we are analyzing the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week, green bar performance of previous week, and blue bar performance of two weeks before that. Together they represent one month of performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and any line to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week, 10 of the 11 sectors went up, showing a bullish picture at the sector level. Only consumer discretionary went down. Consumer discretionary went down one week ago as well. Energy is the best performer this week, went up by a massive 6.1 percentage and it also had a huge reversal. One week ago it was the worst performer and now it became the best performer. While energy was turning around using QH real-time sector analysis, you could find value stocks at the very bottom buy them at the right time and profit handsomely from that. In our traders forum, I shared a trade idea on PBF that ended up with a large profit. You may check out that trade from our forum. Sector scorecard and heat map using QH. Here you can see all the 11 sectors analyzed over 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, etc. 5 days represent performance of this week. Cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. Energy and Infotech are the best performing sectors this week. Materials and consumer discretionary are the worst performers. Therefore, if you are looking for long trades, you might look for them in energy and infotech and short traders may look for them in materials and consumer discretionary. That is using sector strength. You could also identify sectors that are rapidly moving up using the pace column 
that represents acceleration or deceleration. Cyan color represents acceleration, magenta represents deceleration. Currently, healthcare is the most accelerating sector, and energy is the second most accelerating sector. Using acceleration, you can look for buying opportunities in these sectors. The most decelerating sector is consumer staples, followed by real estate and utilities. If you are holding long positions in these decelerating sectors, you may be careful and you may also look for shorting opportunities. These are the decisions you can make from sector level analysis. However, sector level is very broad. To make more accurate trading decisions, you may drill down into the industry level, buy into strong industries and short into weak industries. Best performing industries, we are looking at the industries 5 days and 10 days scores. In Q360 degrees technique, we like to align forces from the industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level. Therefore, we are going to look for only buy setups from these best performing industries. We saw just a while ago that energy is the best performing sector and that strength is also reflected from the best performing industries. Five of the best performing industries are in energy sector. These are coal and consumable fuels, oil and gas drilling, oil and gas equipment and services, oil and gas refining and marketing, and oil and gas exploration of and production. You can find the best performing industries of this week from QEdge using the 5 days strength. The best performers are shown in cyan color. Oil and gas refining and marketing is one of them. It was weak earlier shown by the magenta color in previous review periods and now it rapidly gained strength and became one of the 10 best performing industries. If you drill down, you will find several stocks. One of them is PBF. PBF has valuation score in cyan color showing that it is optimally valued and the earnings growth in the latest quarter is green and positive large number relative to previous quarter which had negative earnings growth. It has a decent dividend of 3.69 percentage. Here we have a stock PBF that is optimally valued having great earnings growth, decent dividend and in an industry that is strong as well. You would look for a buying opportunity in this stock. In our traders forum, I shared such a trade setup on PBF. Energy value stock displayed bullish headwind at pendulum low. You may check out the idea from our forum that trade has already hit its profit target. This is PBF using at a glance template. I shared it in the traders forum when it displayed the bullish headwind in the daily chart. You could take the long trade at the close of that day, putting stop just below recent low. Since then price has gone up, you could book at least partial profit on Friday. As the industry is strong, this stock has strong fundamental and it is looking strong in the weekly chart. There would not be any reason to exit full position 
you would exit partial position with discipline book profit and you will continue to hold partial position with trailing stop trying to let profit run was performing industries these are the 10 worst performing industries of the week following 360 degrees technique you are going to look for shorting opportunities here and avoid buying we saw consumer discretionary is the sector that went down this week that weakness is reflected at the industry level as well five of the worst performing industries are in consumer discretionary these are home furnishing retail, apparel retail, motorcycle manufacturers, textiles, and casinos and gaming. In QA, real time industry analyst, the worst performing industries are displayed by magenta color under five days column. Casinos and gaming is one of them. It was weak earlier. In the middle, it tried to gain strength. The score changed color to cyan and then gradually it decreased in strength. The scores changed to magenta color. If you drill down, you find WIN, W-Y-N-N. -N. Its valuation is in yellow color, showing that it has medium valuation. And the earnings growth in the latest quarter is negative. In fact, this is the only stock in the group having negative earnings growth in the latest quarter. Valuation is in the middle. Earnings growth is negative. Overall, this stock is having weak fundamentals you will look for shorting opportunity in this stock win using q weekly daily at a glance template in the weekly chart it went up nicely after displaying the bullish headwind signal in the daily chart after earnings price went up for a while, pulled back, went back to the same level, came to the wide direction line and then created a reversal candle. The reversal candle is shown by this reversal dot. This is the reversal dot showing that we had a reversal candle at this point. The same candle also displayed a bear release signal and a bearish headwind signal at the same time. Price reversed at the watermark resistance, creating a false upside breakout. There were many bearish signals, double top with bear release signal with bearish headwind signal, false upside breakout, and a reversal candle. Using all these signals, you could take a very low risk short. You could enter the short right at the close of this candle, putting stop just above recent high. From there, price dropped significantly. You could book initial profit at the yellow direction line. As the stock's fundamental is weak, the industry is weak, and from the weekly chart, you can see the technical is also weak. Following Q standard guideline, you would book partial profit with discipline and hold on to partial position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. Accelerating industries. These were weak earlier but now gaining strength rapidly following 360 degrees technique. You are going to look for buying opportunities here.
you saw healthcare is the most accelerating sector this week. That acceleration is reflected in the industries. Three of the ten most accelerating industries are in healthcare sector. These are healthcare distributors, biotech, and managed healthcare. You would look for buying opportunities in these industries. The accelerating industries are shown by cyan color under paste column. Managed healthcare is one of the most accelerating industries. Its acceleration is shown by cyan color under paste column and the 5 day score is already in cyan color showing that it not only accelerated but it is one of the best performing industries now. You would look for buying opportunities in this industry. Let me drill down. These are the stocks in the managed healthcare industry. You may sort by the valuation column and delete the stocks that are overvalued, that is, having magenta color under valuation score. We are left with six stocks. Next, you may sort by the latest quarter earnings growth. And if you want only stocks with increasing earnings growth, you may delete this stock MGLN. We are now left with five stocks in managed healthcare industry. This industry is accelerating. All of them have medium valuation and they have decent earnings growth in not only the last quarter but in previous quarters as well. UNH is a stock that is having excellent earnings growth in the last three years as well as last three quarters. You would look for a buying opportunity using Q charts. This is UNH using weekly daily at a glance template. This stock we saw as a fundamentally strong stock and it was in an accelerating industry. The last step in 360 degrees technique would be to look for a valid Q trade setup. That setup came on this day as a bounce trade setup. Price dropped sharply and suddenly both in the weekly chart and the daily chart. Then it hit the pre-existing memory support line that is still there in the weekly chart. Then it reversed from the longer term weekly memory support line on this day, displayed a bull release signal and the reversal happened with heavy activity. That made all the checklist conditions for the bounce long trade setup. You could take the long right at the close of that day, put stop just below recent low. That stop was never hit. This week price went up enough to cover more than the risk distance. You could book at least partial profit. There are several memory resistance lines ahead, still some distance away from Friday's closing. If the stock continues to go up, when it comes near the memory resistance line around 265, you may keep a close eye on that to see if the stock is reversing or if it is able to pierce through the resistance. If it is reversing, you will book profit in the remaining position. If it is piercing, you will continue to hold on to remaining position with trailing stop trying to let profit run. Decelerating industries. These were strong earlier but are losing momentum. If you are holding 
long position in any of these industries you may be careful apply trailing stop or book profit and you may also look for shorting opportunity we saw utilities as a sector is one of the most decelerating sectors it was the second most decelerating sector this week gas utilities is one of the most decelerating industries you will be cautious if you are holding long position in any stock in this industry the decelerating industries are shown by magenta color under base column gas utilities was strong earlier now it has decelerated and five day score has turned somewhere between cyan and magenta it is not very weak but it is not strong as well and the deceleration is shown by magenta color under base column if we drill down we find several stocks that are overvalued these are having magenta color under valuation column you can apply the smart filter the exhausted battery to see only the overvalued stocks if you want also stocks that are having negative earnings growth you can sort by the latest quarter earnings growth column and you see njr as the stock having negative earnings growth not only in the latest quarter but in previous two quarters as well overvalued stock with decreasing earnings growth in a decelerating industry and looking at the 52 week high column you can see it is very close to 52 week high the stock has gone up a lot fundamentally it is overvalued negative earnings growth decelerating industry several weaknesses in this stock and also in the industry if you are holding a long position you will be cautious what about technicals this is njr using q at a glance template this week it ended with a bullish color but in this is shape price tried to go up but failed and came down in the daily chart it came to the memory resistance line and failed to go up from there on thursday it displayed a bearish headwind signal on friday it tried to go up but closed in the middle with an indecisive shape candle friday's activity volume was extremely high when a stock displays extreme high volume at a resistance level and we also had a bearish headwind signal one day before it is time to be cautious there is no short signal yet if you are holding a long position you may protect profit using trailing stop and if the stock continues to go down from here using fine tune real time chart you may look for a shorting opportunity those were the regular topics of our weekly market roundup let me summarize the market reversed this week went up strongly however different etfs are showing conflicting signals spy and qqq are quite strong whereas dia and iwm are not so strong when different etfs send conflicting signals my preference is to stay away from the market that is the conclusion from the market level as you saw using the 360 degrees technique aligning industry fundamental and technical strength or weakness you can always find low risk high probability trading opportunities both in the long direction as well as in the short direction that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in the next session 
and also in the morning market meeting that is a live webinar open to the public you may register for that session from the education live class menu on our website have a great weekend and trade profitably